Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel and happy 2019, it's New Year's Day. And I'm going to start something that's going to be a rather long video. By the time you see this, it's going to be two months ago. So, uh, happy new year. It's probably going to be sometime in February when this video, or February or March when this video airs. But I'm going to do some dry aging. So, come right back and check it out. Cast off against the wake and the morning's coming now. I can hear you. All right, guys, if you're not familiar um, with uh, dry aging beef, it's um, actually pretty easy. And there's a company out there that makes these special bags, and they're called Umai Bags. They're Umai Dry is the name of the company. And what they do is they make these bags that they're similar to a vacuum bag, but they are a uh, breathable membrane that makes it uh, easy to dry age your own beef without any uh, issues. So all you really need is your own refrigerator or you can have another refrigerator out in the garage like a lot of us do, which is what I do, it's what I'm gonna do. And um, all, that's all you need, something where you can keep it in the refrigerator, you know, at the regular refrigerator temperatures of, you know, under 40 degrees <clears throat> and keep it for, you know, 30, 60, 75 days, sometimes, a hundred days to dry age it so it's best to dry age a primal a full primal and what I'm gonna do is actually a lot of people will do full ribeye or full strip loins um, but I'm gonna do a packer brisket a prime packer brisket that I picked up at Costco um, $2.99 a pound for a prime brisket and if you're familiar with any of the other um, uh, cooking channels like sous vide anything or everything or Guga Foods. Guga actually did one um, not too long ago. He did a 60 day um, choice brisket that he dry aged and it turned out rather well which intrigued me. So I'm not really going to copy him. I'm going to actually do something a little bit different with this brisket. This is a prime grade so it's a little bit uh, higher grade than what he used but I'm only going to do it for 45 days. I'm not going to do 60. I'm hoping since it's a prime grade, uh, 45 days will be get similar results that what he got. And um, I'll go ahead and link to his video up here because uh, it was really opened my eyes to what you can do with a brisket when you dry age it. So, um, like I said, this I'm going to go ahead and dry age for 45 days. I'm gonna stick it in that refrigerator and not touch it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and also. I have a um, beef top loin, top sirloin, um, without the cap on. So I picked this up at at uh, Costco also, but this is a choice grade. So I'm also going to dry age this as well and cut some uh, sirloin steaks from it. So we're going to do these both for 45 days. So I'm going to put them both in today. So I'm going to go ahead and get this prepped, and we'll be right back. I right, guess first of all, what I want to go through is. Um, these are my dry bags. You can get them on Amazon. You can find them uh, at their own website, umidry.com. But um, I happened to pick these up on their website because Amazon was out of the brisket size. They come in different size bags, so just make sure that you get the right size bag for what you're wanting to do. They have some that are roast size bags, so if you're doing a smaller roast, you can do those. They have some for the strip loins, which is a little bit more narrow. Um, they have these bigger bags that you can use for brisket. They're also for like your bone-in primals, like your uh, bone-in prime ribeye primal. So just make sure you get the right bags for what you're trying to, uh, to age. There's some instructions on here, and pretty much everything in the kit tells you exactly what to do. You're going to need a vacuum sealer, first of all. Uh, there's no getting around it because these are bags that need to be vacuum sealed. Like I said, even though they are different than a vacuum bag, they are a membrane where these bags let air out, but they don't let air come back in. So what happens is, as this uh, sits in the refrigerator, moisture will leave the meat and kind of dry out, but you won't let any more moisture back into the bag. So it lets it kind of breathe out, but not breathe in. So that's what keeps a lot of the bacteria and all the bad stuff that happens when meat starts to rot out. 
And one of the things you have to do when you're doing these transferring the meat into the bag is you, you don't want to take the meat out of the bag. You want to actually take this um, piece of meat that's in the cryovac and you're going to wash the bag really, really clean. And then you're going to actually put this bag partially in the other bag. You're going to cut, cut it open at the top. You're going to slide the bag over your uh, uh, meat here that's already in the bag. And you're going to kind of transfer that meat into the other bag by pulling this bag off of it. So you don't want to expose it to any of the outside air. So you just don't want to wash, take this out, wash it off, and then put it in that bag. You want to wash the outside of this bag and then transfer it inside the bag so that we don't get any other contamination inside the umai bag. So that's one of the most important things and that's what I'm going to do right now and we'll get this started. So I'll be right One back. of the things I'm going to do with this other bag that I have, since the uh, top sirloin um, loin that I have, the whole top sirloin I have is a lot smaller than that brisket. I'm actually going to cut the uh, bag down to about, take about a quarter of this bag off, maybe a little bit less, just so that I don't have so much extra in the uh, space in there. So I still want this to be, you know, as airtight as I can get it. So I'm just going to trim maybe about this much off of the bag so that we can not have as much extra. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go ahead and wash up the uh, sirloin and get it in the bag. Alright guys, I'm going to show you how we're going to start this out. One of the first things you want to do is make sure you wash the outside of the cryo pack of your meat really well with soap and hot water. Make sure you also, before you do that, make sure you wash your sink out really well. Because what we're trying to avoid here is cross-contamination. We don't want any, uh, any kind of germs or anything getting inside the umai bag. So that's why you wash the outside of the cryo pack. We're going to cut the top off the cryo pack and we're going to slide the bag right into the umai bag because we don't want to have any contamination. We're going to pull the cryo pack out while leaving the meat totally in the umai bag. Now that we've got the meat inside the cryo inside the umai bag, we're going to go ahead and seal about 75% of the top. Since the bag is much wider than the vacuum sealer, we're going to have to seal a good portion of the top before we can vacuum seal this. So Umai recommends you actually sealing this about two to three times. So you take about 75% of the opening and you get it inside the vacuum bag and just seal it two or three times. And once we got that done, we're going to open it up and we're going to take our vac mouse fabric that comes with the UMI bags and we're going to make sure we clean the uh, opening off really good first. We're going to stick that uh, vac mouse in there and we're going to make sure we got that inside the vacuum sealer really good. And then we're going to go ahead and make sure we push any of the excess plastic up against the meat as much as we can. And then we're going to go ahead and seal it. We're going to make sure we do it on a moist seal on this particular one so that we can uh, give it a nice tight seal. Uh, and again, we're going to make sure that we seal this two to three times after it's done uh, vacuum sealing just to get, make sure that the seal is nice and tight. And like I said, we're going to have as much of the plastic touching the meat as possible. You need at least 75 to 80 percent of the plastic touching the meat by what my bag says and that's all there is to it guys once you make sure you have it all sealed up and you have as much of the meat touching the bag as possible you're going to put it on top of a rack on top of a cookie sheet or any other type of pan you want to make sure that this has some good airflow around it and you want to make sure when you put it on the rack that you make sure that's all the plastic as tight as possible around the meat we're going to stick this in a refrigerator, regular refrigerator. I'm going to stick it in my garage refrigerator, which sits at around 37 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what you want it at. You want it around that temperature. And then I'm going to do the top sirloin for 35 days. And then we're going to do a video when we take that out and do some cook, 
cook some of the steaks up for that and then I'm going to let the brisket go for 45 days and then I'll do a separate video when that comes out. So I hope you guys got something out of this. This is a basic video on how to use the Umai dry age bags. I think uh, this is going to be something I'm going to do it on a regular basis going forward. It's really simple. Just make sure you follow the steps exactly the way they have them and you shouldn't have any issues uh, with turning out some really great product. Make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on our Facebook group, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video, hopefully with some really great aged beef. Thanks again, thanks for watching.